Good morning. Noah's adventure, as Kara's just shared with us, is a well-known story to all of us. It's hard for me to imagine what life was like during that time of Noah. God had to be heartbroken as creation was so rebellious. The people refused to repent. It's difficult for me to understand the destruction that occurred and why there was not some other way, some other way of dealing with things. Noah must have been a very skilled craftsman, probably an architect, definitely a CEO, a planner, an organizer, et cetera, et cetera. To follow God's directions to build an ark and all that was needed to be gathered in, to be put on board. Amazing collection of skills and talents for one man to have. As I was thinking about this, being a mathematician, 40 days of rain was just the beginning step. There was another 150 days for the water to subside. Then 14 more days with the dove going out and back and out and back and then finally not returning. And then 60 more days of waiting, waiting for the land to dry up so they could actually leave the boat. 264 days of quarantine. However, the focus point of all this is really the unconditional promise that God made to never do this again. There were no conditions placed by God. Simply an unconditional promise. God's symbol of that, as we've shown and will continue to discuss, is the rainbow. I understand how light rays shine through water to create this spectrum of the colors that we see, but it's still a marvel. All of us have seen rainbows. And I've, I know that we've all looked with wonder and amazement at their beauty. The focus here today is the unconditional promise that God made. The next time you see a rainbow, please stop look and listen listen in your mind and reflect on the meaning of that unconditional promise there's several things that i would like to remember as i think of unconditional promise events first god so loved the world that he gave his only son he sent him not to condemn the world but that through him all might experience eternal life Jesus is an unconditional gift to each one of us. God has a sacred relationship with each one of us. We are created in his image. And we are his beloved children. We desire a closer relationship with God. We repent of events that hinder us from being in that deep understanding of, and our connectedness with him. Secondly, this is the first week of Lent, as we mentioned. Lent is a time of, to remember the events leading up to the crucifixion and the resurrection of Christ. Many people choose to give up something for this 40-day period, to focus on sacrifice within their own life as a symbol of the sacrifice Christ made for them. Some may choose to make a commitment to do something different for Lent with the hope that if you do something with a frequency for a long time, it will become a habit of living, living a more Christ-like life. Many of you know that I'm a person that picks a word for the year and a lot of you do that kind of same thing. It's time for us to live that word that we have to make it a habit of our living. Fourthly, just a week ago, it was Valentine's Day. Flowers, chocolates, cards, and other sort, assorted remembrances we shared with those that we feel close to, unconditionally sharing. I am so grateful that I had the opportunity to spend my winter here in Colorado. I love being in the outdoors, the mountains. I love skiing. I experience the beauty of God's creation daily and continue to pursue all of those things with an attitude of gratitude. 
This year has been unique in so many ways, but to me, it has brought an awareness of who I am and whose I am. I try to express my willingness to follow this greatest commandment of love God and love your neighbor. Several years ago, I sang with the Olathe Choir in a cantata called Jesus is Lord. And some of you may have remembered that, that uh, time ago. There's one song that has constantly been in my mind and I've remembered it and I think of it so often. Three lines of the lyrics are this, whatever you do for your brother, you also do for me. Whatever you do for your sister, you also do for me. Whatever you do for anyone, you also do for me. Robin shared a little bit ago about her experiences there. I was so taken back several weeks ago when she was talking about a lady from a knitting circle that stopped by just wanting to know if she could do something and then got her knitting circle to make hats, gloves and other things for the Center Avenue. I was just so impressed and just constantly think of that. Someone who just responded because they saw a sign. To me, this is like putting your light on a candlestick and holding it up so it lights the path for others to follow. Skiing is an event that you often see someone who fall on the slopes and they lose their poles, they lose their skis. We call it a garage sale. But every time I see someone come down and start picking up the pieces and carrying them down to the person, helping that person get up and get their equipment back on and continue on their journey down the hill. It's very frequent that we open the door for someone else. You know, even if it lets that person get ahead of us in the line. And in a skiing analogy this year with reduced capacity of, of the lifts, you always come in this line where you have to merge with someone. And there's a big sign that says alternate. In other years, it was not uncommon for certain people to try to sneak ahead of you. This year, I find it much more uh, willing for people to alternate and to take the terms and maybe even to stop and say, no, no, you go ahead of us. I have seen many rainbows this year rainbows that I want to live and make that rainbow connection. That connection of unconditional sharing, of unconditional giving, always remembering that I don't get a second chance to make that first impression. Thank you, God, for the joys and the blessings that you have given me. May your rainbow always lead me to my unconditional response. Let's all watch as Josie and Edison create their rainbow connection. Hi, Josie, hi, Edison. We're gonna do a focus moment today. So while I'm reading, do what mommy asked you to do. The rainbow God sets in the clouds to signify God's covenant with humankind is still today often seen as a sign of hope. A rainbow in the sky often gives a sense of peace after a storm may have passed. Do you know how rainbows are made? Yeah. What do you think? Tell me. If the sun can hit the air one just right, it will make a rainbow. Oh, what do you think, Edison? I think that Rockland, can you turn up your volume, please? Okay. Light that we see from the sun or white light is made up of many colors. When this light passes through a prism or a droplet of water, the light bends enough to separate the different colors and then we're able to see them. This is what is happening when we see a rainbow in the sky. The sunlight is passing through tiny water droplets in the air. 
spreading the light apart so that we can see all the colors. Today, there are lots of ways that we can make a rainbow. What are some of the ways we can make a rainbow, Josie? Wear a hose up to the sun and it might make a rainbow. Yeah. What do you think, Edison? How can you make a rainbow? I think we can make a rainbow with a water sprinkler. Okay, anything else? No. Well, we can use a crystal or even a glass of water. Or we can use colored paper and pencils or markers or chalk. Sometimes we can even use food to dye, to rake a rainbow cake or cookies. We're going to make our rainbow by placing Skittles around a plate and adding a little warm water. So you have your Skittles how you want them? Okay, make your rainbow. Now you're gonna take your cup and pour it on there. In the middle? Pour it on your Skittles. There are many ways to make a rainbow just as there are many ways that we can respond as disciples of God's grace and generosity. Hi Josie, hi Ed. All right. Well, welcome and thank you for letting me be part of Mission Road Congregation. Um, this whole Zoom journey that we've been on since last uh, March and April has been um, interesting to say the least, um, but, uh, but it has definitely opened the boundaries uh, for people to share together and join together and worship. So for that, I have uh, greatly appreciated uh, when we have our Zooms each Sunday, we have people from Colorado. Thank you, Ron and Karen. We have people from Las Vegas. We have people from Florida. We have people from all over that are able to join us um, and remember from, from family or communities in the past. So it's been a, a lot of fun. Kind of glad I didn't have to wake up and, at 5.30 and drive down to Mission Road. We are uh, currently getting another, I think, probably six inches today. So it's uh, coming down strong and, and all that kind of good stuff. So I'm glad I didn't have to drive uh, down to uh, to Mission Road today. Um, but I do, before I, before I get started, I do want to uh, clarify a couple things that Ron said. Um, first, he did say it was several years ago um, that he sang in that choir at Olathe. Uh, Ron, I, I believe that was maybe late 70s or early 80s. I think we're beyond several. Um, so, uh, but, but you know, hey, however you wanna keep count, Mr. Mathematician. Also, I do appreciate the plug for Disney Plus. Um, if you didn't know, uh, with Ron's statements of Rainbow Connection, uh, The Muppet Show is now on Disney Plus starting this week. So a uh, nice little plug for our friendly uh, Disney, Disney people. Um, but the other thing I wanted to talk about is what, what Ronnie, Ronnie, my dad, I don't know, uh, was, was talking about how even with this covenant that, uh, that God has given Noah and his God, God has given um, the world, while it's unconditional, there certainly are some things that we do in return. And so that's going to be kind of my focus um, of this morning. Uh, when, when, when dad first asked me to do this with him, he, he first asked me to think about, you know, what are those, what's a symbol, you know, thinking about that rainbow. Um, what's a symbol that reminds you of that covenant with God or that relationship with God? And so Karen, if you can go to the next screen. One of the things that I uh, first was thinking about um, was an Anuksuk. Um, and if you don't know what a Anuksuk is, I've got it on my little camera here. Um, this is one that I keep um, beside my bed made out of some jade stone. Um, and, and I actually, uh, this is the picture you see is taken from Whistler. Um, I was able to sh uh, share a few days of skiing with Ron and Karen uh, a few years ago. Um, up at Whistler in Canada. And you might know this symbol um, as the symbol of the Vancouver Olympics. Um, and they are all over, um, the, all over the place up there. And uh, I, I wanna share a little bit about what the Anuksuk um, historically means and maybe what it means today. So if you can go to the next slide, Karen. Oh, I need to pull up my own because I can't read that. Let's see, hold on. 
There we go. Um, Anuksuk is an Inuit word meaning in the shape of man, um, while ongoing providing direction, a place to store food, an aid to the caribou hunt or memorial, it is seen today as a symbol of friendship and good luck. I want to talk to you a little bit of history about um, what I, my history, my personal history with this. Um, back in 1999 or, or 2000, maybe in Ron terms, several years ago, um, I was at Mission Road and Sherry Gordon was working with youth, with the youth then and, and I was helping her uh, quite a bit. And one of the things that she had us do and had the youth do was to build an Ebenezer. Um, and uh, I'm gonna have you flip to a screen and then go back, Karen. Um, so an Ebenezer was something that we had talked about uh, being a stone of help. Up to this point, the Lord had helped us is from 1 Samuel. And so what Sherry had uh, the youth do back then was to build Ebenezer, Ebenezer's. Here I build my Ebenezer. Um, and we would build stacks of rocks um, as, a, as, a, as a worship practice. And so, so that was my first kind of um, introduction into the idea of rock forms as a worship or meditation or, or, or type of, of thing. Um, if you can go back, Karen. Um, the next thing that I remember was uh, going down to Arizona and looking at these fields of rock structures um, called cairns. So we have Ebenezer's, we have cairns, we have the Anukshuk um, that is, uh, that's visible all through the uh, north from the Inuits. And they're guiding directional beacons. They're symbols of hope. They're signposts for travelers. When we talk about the covenant of the rainbow, and we see that rainbow as the symbol that God gives to us, that he will never destroy the earth again. We have the Inuit people that would build this symbol as a reminder for those of where to go, of what was happening, of the different uh, uh, places that might be a good place to, to hunt, uh, might be a good uh, place for, for, for different things. Um, or the other idea was with these stacks of rocks along a horizon, you can see it raise up from the, from the ground. And so it was a directional piece. So I can go from rock structure to rock structure. I'm going to have you go down a couple slides now, Karen. There we go. And so this is a picture of dear little Kara um, back in 2008. Um, and this is down in Arizona. We had a trip to Sedona and we would build our own Karens. We would build our own um, structures and, and shapes for memorials for others or just a peaceful meditation as you sit and try to balance rock and you look across an entire field of rock structures. You can find these in Arizona, you can find these in Colorado, uh, you can find these in Hawaii along the shorelines. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a nice reminder, again, I'm going back to that covenant, it's a nice reminder of things from the past. It's a nice reminder of that relationship to our earth, of our um, oneness with scripture and oneness with spirituality and oneness with our connection to God. And so here's where I wanna connect all of this together. You can go to my last slide there, Karen. The Anukshuk was an ancient guardian of the Arctic who pointed the way, bestowing hope and strength upon the weary hunter. I keep one of these by my bed as a, as a reminder, um, and it, it provides me peace, it provides me calm. I actually have one at my office at school um, that kind of oversees my desk in my office. Um, again, not something I look at every day, but uh, when I do see it, it's that reminder of that peace and hope 
that can come through having someone watch over you. And isn't that kind of what the covenant with the rainbow was to Noah and his family? God sent that rainbow as a covenant, as a, as a symbol of that reminder, that sworn solemn agreement of a future relationship with God. God promised a relationship with us now and into the future, and we are called to share it. And so as Ron was talking about um, the nice things that we do for other people, the, the random acts of kindness, the, 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 the gratitude, the attitude of gratitude, the way that to share the love of Christ with others, that's what we're called to do. While the Anukshuk was the ancient guardian for the Inuits and the signpost and the directional guide, we're called to be that for each other. We're called to be that for weary Christians, to help point the way, to bestow hope and strength upon the weary Christian. A song that I have uh, used quite frequently uh, throughout the years is by Steve Green called Find Us Faithful. And I believe it's a great way to end this idea of how we are called to be that directional guide for weary Christians. Because we hope that all who come behind us find us faithful. That the fires of our devotions light their ways. May the footprints that we leave lead them to believe. And the lives we live inspire them to obey. May all who come behind us see us as that directional beacon and find us faithful.